On the line with us is uh, Brian Welch. He is a uh, both a clinical psychologist and an attorney. That's an interesting combination. He's the author of the new book, State of Confusion, Political Manipulation and the Assault on the American Mind. His website, Bryant Welch, B-R-Y-A-N-T-W-E-L-C-H dot com. And uh, Bryant, welcome to the program. Thank you, Tom. It's nice to be here. Thanks for joining us. So, so uh, you know, what is your core assertion here in this book? Well, uh, Tom, your introduction there was a, a chilling uh, uh, bridge to what I'm talking about in State of Confusion. And the question I'm trying to answer is why is the human mind so vulnerable to the kind of manipulations that, that led to Hitler? And, you know, differences have to be acknowledged. But uh, it's a chilling in its, uh, the way it's so uncanny in its connection to what a number of us are experiencing in the present American political scene. State of Confusion focuses on the American mind and uh, less on the mind of Donald Trump and more on the mind of uh, the people who are supporting him and it really, in fairness, those of us who have been opposing him because we're not doing a very good job of it. So the thesis is uh, it, to understand the current predicament in America, we have to understand the American mind uh, in order to understand <clears throat> how it's vulnerable and how, in fact, we are, we are being manipulated. And there is a hopeful note in the book. As dire as things are now, with neuroscience and things we're learning about the mind, if we will pay attention to it, we can improve our mental functioning and be less vulnerable to demagogues, whoever we think they are and however uh, they operate. On the tail end of uh, 2008, back when George W. Bush was president, your book first came out, the first edition of it, and you were arguing that uh, the, uh, if, I, if, I, if I have this correct, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong, that basically all the lies that we had been told to get us into the war in Iraq, the lies about our ongoing torture programs, other things like that, that, that we had been so gaslighted that we had lost our ability to tell the difference between right and wrong, or for that matter, truth and fiction. Um, a, what, do I have that right? And B, are things worse now, or is this just a continuation? Is the Trump presidency the logical consequence of, of you know, basically 40 years of Americans being lied to ever since Reagan started telling us that if you just cut taxes on rich people, everybody would get a pay raise? Uh, yes, you've got it just right. And I, as I said in the first edition of the book, the problem <clears throat> was not going to end just because George Bush left office. And the reason I wrote the second edition that we're talking about now, A State of Confusion, is that the mind has deteriorated, the situation has gotten a lot worse. If you want a little quick uh, measure of that, conjure up an image of George W. Bush, and now conjure up an image of Donald Trump. And I think most of us have a visceral reaction to the difference between the two. But I talk about the, the way the mind works and why it was vulnerable to the kind of things that have started happening in the, in, the political, in the political world. And it's fascinating when you compare the kind of manipulations or gaslighting that took place with the Bush administration, for example, by Karl Rove or what have you. If you now look at the kind of statements in, in the first edition of the book, I marveled at the intricacy and complexity of the deceptive web, web that the uh, far right was using in, the, in their mass media. Today, what's striking is how amazingly simple it is. If you look at Kellyanne Conway and what she says, she doesn't have to come up with elaborate uh, de deceptions. She simply makes a few assertions, and the American mind has grown so weak that it's not able to discriminate, to challenge, and to think critically. And I document why that's happened in, in the book, In State of Confusion. And don't you the, think a lot of people just know that she's lying through her teeth, that Sarah Sanders is lying through her teeth? I mean, the press comes out and says, you know, Sarah Sanders told another lie today. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it, it seems more like we're just going, yeah, I guess we're powerless to do anything about it. Well, I think that's where I'm saying the, the liberal or progressive mind is weak. But the thing that we forget in all that is that uh, close to a majority of Americans don't think that she's lying, and they don't challenge it. Mm. And if you watch CNN, you're going to have one perspective on what's happened. But I tell my progressive friends, if you're not watching Fox News, you don't understand the reality that's being fed 
uh, to uh, to the other half of, of the American mind. Yeah, that's true. And that's where the damage is, is being done. Now, don't get me wrong. Uh, with the onset of Fox News, a lot of media have moved in the direction of devious uh, communications and the styles that I talk about in some detail in State of Confusion. But uh, the fact of the matter is this country is being fed very, very different realities. So you sit there and you watch... CNN or MSNBC, you've got one reality. You got to switch the dial and watch them both simultaneously, and it's it's stunning how different uh, the world is being portrayed with the two different uh, media capitals. How bifurcated are we? Uh, to what extent do people who watch Fox News literally never go outside the conservative media bubble? They just listen to Limbaugh on the radio and read Daily Caller online. And to what extent do people who who uh, you know uh, 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 read Daily Kos or Democratic Underground or Alternate or something like that, um, you know, not ever watch Fox News and just stay to to free speech TV we, or MSNBC? We, we are very bifurcated. That's the point that I'm making about if you're not looking at the other person's information and what forms their sense of reality in the world then we don't know what's going on and we can't understand the problem. I'm trying to address that problem of our device divisions in state of confusion by looking at the mind. The most important thing the mind does for us is create a sense of reality, what we think reality is. Now, we think it's just something out there externally to be discerned and to be noted, but it's not. It's a mental function by which we select certain aspects of reality and we integrate them and we weave them into our own reality sense. When this we have a hard time doing that, we don't do so well, and we don't like to be threatened by realizing there are other perspectives that other people have. So now, this is a country that's always had differences, but we've been able to tolerate listening to other people's perspective without being so threatened that we have to start hating these people and seeing them as evil. And that's the big problem that's confronting America. We can tolerate differences, but our mind's capacity to tolerate is, is breaking down because it's been under so much stress, and it's outstripping the capacity of the mind to assimilate new information, to process the kind of traumatic experiences that are affecting our lives, and to withstand the kind of political manipulation and gaslighting that's permeating the airwaves and our and our public discourse. To what extent is uh, are you are you suggesting that we need to start paying attention to them? It, it seems to me like, you know, we need to figure out a way to get them to start paying attention to us, to 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 the worldview that is shared by the majority of Americans and, frankly, the vast majority of people around the world in developed countries. My my primary message is that we need to start paying attention to our minds, to the way the mind works ours and theirs. And when we begin to understand these mechanisms that I talk about in the book, what I call the battleground state. No, but this, this all sounds very didactic, uh, you know, Bryant. What <laughs> specifically can I do to get the guy who lives next door to me, well, I don't, you know, there isn't one right now, but, uh, you know, th my next door neighbor who watches Fox News all day long to watch something else? Uh, you, you can start with listening, listening to him and uh, not trying to insist with logic or reason that he should give up his views. But if you look at what I've said in State of Confusion, Tom, I've got a much more elaborate set of things that have to happen. Uh, they have to happen at the national level in the communication style of our leaders. They have to start at the, uh, and they have to also take place at the individual level in our communication with everyone paying more attention to how the mind works. So we're less vulnerable to the kinds of manipulative tactics that are taking place so we can employ mental hygiene on ourselves and on our families and in our community. Okay. And there are things we can do there if you'll take the time to do it. Bryant Welch is the author of the book, is State of Confusion, Political Manipulation and the Assault on the American Mind. Bryant, thanks for dropping by. Thank you, Tom. It's a pleasure. Good, good talking with you.